Good morning, scholars. Welcome back to Stormfront, with one of the Dresden Piles. Sorry, I'm not uploading anything really. Um, what's it called? Thursday? I was just so... perturbed. I don't know. Is that even a word? Anyway. Uh, how are you guys doing? How are you, Iggy? He's still angry. The turtles are relaxing. After I'm done here, I'm going to change out the water and add a lot of the water to it. Uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. Anywho, we are in chapter 7, page 78. Uh, <coughs> I should have drunk more water. Drink? Drunk? Which one is it? I don't know. Have you ever been approached by a grim-looking man carrying a naked sword with a blade about ten miles long in his hand in the middle of the night beneath the stars on the shores of Lake Michigan? If you have, seek professional help. If you have not, then believe you me, they can scare the... I'm not sure if I should say this better. Living daylights out of you. I took in a quick breath and had to work to, um, not to put it into a quasi Latin phrase on the exhale, one that would set the man's body on fire and reduce him. What the heck was that? To a mound of ashes. I react badly to fear. I don't usually have the good sense to run or hide. I just try to smash whatever is in, whatever it is that is making me afraid. It's a primitive sort of thing, and I and one I don't question too much. Sorry. Seriously. What is scratching at my door? And that nail is still in there. I forgot where I was. Oh, okay. But reflex-based murder seemed a tad extreme, so rather than setting him on fire, I nodded instead. Okay, that's gonna get annoying. Huh. It's been really cloudy all morning. Evening, Morgan. You know, as, you know as well as I do that those laws apply to mortals, not fairies. Especially for something as trivial as I just did. And I didn't break the fourth law. He had the choice whether to take my deal or not. Morgan's sour, leathery face turned a bit more sour. The lines at the corners of his mouth stretching and becoming deeper. As a technicality, Dresden, a pair of them. What? His hands, broad and strong, resettled their grip upon the sword he held. His unevenly graying hair was tied into a ponytail in the back like Sean Connery's in some of his movies, except that Morgan's face was too pinched and thin to pull off the look. The point being, I did my best to keep from looking nervous or impressed. Truth be told, I was both. Morgan was my warden, assigned to me by the White Council to make sure I didn't bend or break any of the laws of magic. Huh. He hung about and spied on me mostly and usually came sniffing around after I'd cast a spell of some kind. I would be... Darn. If I was going to let the White Council's guard dog see any fear out of me. Besides, he would take it as a sign of guilt in the true spirit of paranoid fanatics everywhere. Eh. So all I had to do was keep a straight face and get out before my weariness made me slip up or do or say anything that he could use against me. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. My chest hurts again. Morgan was one of the deadliest uh, advocators in the world. He wasn't bright enough to question his loyalties to the council, and he could do um, quick and dirty magic like few others could quick and dirty enough to rip the hearts out of Tommy Tom and Jennifer Stanton's chests, in fact, if he wanted to. Interesting. My point, he said, scowling, is that it is my assigned duty to monitor your use of your power. 
your use and to see to it that you do not abuse it. I'm on a missing persons case, I said. All I did was call up the Dewdrop Ferry to get some information. Come on, Morgan. Everybody calls up fairies now and then. There's no harm in it. It's not as though I'm mind controlling the things, just uh, leaning on them a little. Technicality, Morgan growled. I stuck out my chin at him belligerently. We were of a height, though he outweighed me by about a hundred pounds. I could pick better people to antagonize, but he'd gotten under my skin. A technicality, I'm prepared to hide wildly behind. So unless you want to convene a meeting of the council to call me on it, we could just drop the discussion right here. I'm pretty sure it would only take them about two days to cancel all their plans, make travel arrangements, and then get there, or get here. I could put up with you until then. I mean, you'd be dragging a bunch of really crotchety old men away from their experiments and things for nothing, but if you really think it's necessary. Morgan scowled at me. No, it isn't worth it. He opened his dark trench coat and slid the sword away into its scabbard. I relaxed a little. The sword wasn't the most dangerous thing about him, not by a long shot, but it was a symbol of authority given to him by the White Council, and if the rumors were true, it was enchanted to cut through the, magic, uh, the magical spells of anyone resisting him. I didn't want things ever to go far enough for me to find out if the rumors were true. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm glad we agree about something, I said. Nice seeing you again. I started to walk past him. Morgan put one of those big hands on my arm as I went by, and his fingers closed around it. I'm not finished with you, Dresden. I didn't dare mess around with Morgan when he was acting in his role as warden of the White Council. But he wasn't wearing that hat now. Once he put the sword away, he was acting on his own without any more official authority than any other man. Or at least, that, that was the technical truth. Morgan was, a, was big on technicalities. He had scared the heck out of me and annoyed the heck out of me in rapid, rapid succession. Now he was trying to bully me. I hate bullies. Hmm. So I took a calculated risk. I used my free hand and hit him as hard as I could in the mouth. I think the blow startled him more than anything else. Uh, he took a step back, letting go of my arm in surprise, and just blinked at me. He put one, one hand to his mouth, and when he drew his fingers away, there was blood on them. I planted my feet and faced him without meeting his eyes. Don't touch me. Morgan continued to stare at me, and then I saw anger creep over his face. Set his jaw, make the veins at his temple stand out. How dare you, he said. How dare you strike me? It wasn't so hard, I said. If you've got a council business with me, I'm willing to give you whatever respect is your due. When you come on strong to me on personal business, I don't have to put up with it. I saw the steam coming out of his ears as he mulled it over. He looked for a reason to come after me, and I realized he didn't have one, uh, according to the laws. Or, but he wasn't too bright. Did I mention that already? And he was a big one for following the laws. You're a fool, Dresden, he sputtered finally. An arrogant little fool. Probably, I told him. I tensed myself to move. Oops. Uh, hey. That's bizarre. Oh, okay, that's what confused me. Move quickly if necessary. I may not like to run away from what scares me, but I try not to fight hopeless battles either. And Morgan had me by years of experience and a hundred pounds at least. There was no law of magic that protected me from him and his fists either. And if what occurred to him, uh, or if that occurred to him, he might decide to do something about it. That punch I landed had been lucky coming out of the blue. I wouldn't get away with it again. Someone killed two people with sorcery last night, Dresden. I think it was you. When I find out how you did it and can trace it back to you, don't think you're going to live long enough to cast the same spell at me. Morgan swiped at the blood with uh, one big fist. It was my turn to blink. I tried to shift mental gears to keep up with the change in subject. Morgan thought I was the killer, and since Morgan didn't know too much of his own thinking, or didn't do too much of his own thinking, that meant the white meant the white council thought I was the killer. 
Holy cow. Of course, it made sense from Morgan's narrow and single-minded point of view. The wizard had killed someone. I was a wizard who had already been convicted of killing another with magic, even if the self-defense clause had got me from being executed. Cops looked for people who had already committed crimes before they started looking for other culprits. Morgan was just another kind of cop, as far as I was concerned. And as far as I was concerned, as he was concerned, I was uh, just one more dangerous con. You're not serious, I told him. You think I did it? He sneered at me. His voice was contemptuous, confident, and seethed with absolute conviction. Don't try to hide it, Tristan. I'm sure you think you're clever enough to come up with something innovative that would um, that we hidebound old man would be able to trace. But you're wrong. We'll determine how you did it, and we'll follow it back to you. And when we do, I'll be there to make sure you never hurt anyone again. Knock yourself out, I told him. It was hard, really, uh, really hard to keep my voice as blithe as I wanted it to sound. I didn't do it, but I'm helping the police find the man who did. The police? Morgan asked. He narrowed his eyes as though dodging my expression, as if they have, could have any authority on this matter. They won't do you any good, even if you do set someone up to take the fall for you under mortal law. The White Council will see that uh, will still see that justice is done. I'm not off to a great start today. His eyes glittered, uh, fanatic bright underneath the stars. Whatever. Look, if you find something out about the killer, anything that could help the cops out, would you give me a call? Morgan looked at me with profound distaste. You asked me to warn you when we were closing in on you, Dresden. You are young, but I never thought you stupid. I put back the obvious comments that I left in my mind. Morgan was on the edge of outrage already. If I realized how rabbit he was to catch me slipping, uh, I wouldn't have added more fuel to his fire by hitting him in the mouth. Okay. I probably still would have hit him in the mouth, but I wouldn't have done it quite so hard. Hmm. Oh, okay. Good night, Morgan. I told him. I started to walk away again before I could let my mouth get me into more trouble. Hmm. He moved faster than I would have given a man his age credit for. His fist went across my jaw at the pro uh, approximately a million miles an hour. That was my chest. And I spun down to the dirt like a string cut puppet. For several long moments, I was unable to do anything at all, even breathe. Morgan loomed over me. We'll be watching you, Dristan. He turned and started walking away, the shadows of the evening quickly swallowing up his black cloak. His voice drifted back to me. We'll find out what really happened. I didn't dare spout out a snappy comeback. I felt my jaw with my fingers and made sure it wasn't broken before I stood up and walked back to the beetle. My legs feeling loose and watery, sorry. I fervently hoped that Morgan would find out what had really happened. It would keep the White Council from executing me for breaking the first law, for one thing. I could feel his eyes on my back, all the way to the beetle. Uh, curse that Morgan. He didn't have to take quite so much pleasure in being assigned to spy on me. I had a sinking feeling that anywhere I went over the next few days, he would be likely to turn up watching. He was like this big cartoon tomcat waiting outside the mouse hole for that little mouse to stick his nose out so he could smash it flat with one big paw. I was feeling a lot like that little mouse. I let that analogy cheer me up a bit. The cartoon cats always seem to get the short end of the stick in the final analysis. Maybe Morgan would too. Part of the problem was that seeing Morgan always brought up too many, too many memories of my angsty teenage days. That was when I started to learn magic when my mentor had tried to seduce me into black wizardry. Good. Well, that was embarrassing. At least I opened up to the correct page. And when he had attempted to kill me when he failed. I killed him instead, mostly by luck, but he was just as dead, and I'd done it with sorcery. I broke the first law of magic, thou shalt not kill. There is only one sentence if someone is found guilty, and one sword. 
um, that they use to carry it out. The White Council uh, commuted uh, the death sentence because tradition demands that a wizard can resort to the use of deadly force if he is defending his own life or the lives of the defenseless, and my claim that I had been attacked first could not be contested by my master's corpse. So instead, they stuck me on a kind of accelerated probation. One strike and I was out. There were some wizards who thought that the judgment against me was ludicrous, uh, was a ludicrous injustice. I happened to be one of them, but my vote didn't uh, count, really. And others who thought that I should have been given, ex uh, should have been executed regardless of the extenuating circumstances. Morgan belonged to that latter group. Just my luck. I was feeling more than a bit surly at the entire White Council, but yet the villain's intentions aside. I guess it only made sense that they'd suspect me, and heaven knows I'd been a thorn in their side, lying in the face of tradition but practicing my art openly. There were plenty of people on the council who might well want me dead. I would have to start being more careful. I rolled down the Beatles' windows on the way back to Chicago to help me stay awake. I was exhausted, but my mind was racing around like a hamster on an exercise wheel, working furiously, getting nowhere. The irony was thick enough to make my tongue curl. The White Council suspected me of the killings, and it, uh, and if no other suspect came forward, I was going to take the rap. Murphy's investigation had just become very, very important to me. But to pursue the investigation, I would have to try to figure out how the killer had pulled off that spell. And to do that, I would have to indulge in highly questionable research that would probably be enough to get me a death sentence all by itself. Catch-22. If I had any respect at all for Morgan's intelligence, I would have suspected him of pulling off the killings himself and setting me up to take the blame. But that just didn't track. Morgan might twist and bend the rules to get what he wants, uh, get what he saw as justice. There we go. But he'd never blatantly violate them. But if not Morgan, then who could have done it? There just weren't all that many people who could get enough power into that kind of spell to make it work, unless there was some flaw of the quasi-physics that governed magic that let parts explode more easily than other things. And I wouldn't know that until I had pursued the forbidden research. Bianca would have more information on who might have done it. She had to. I had already planned on talking to the vampires, but Morgan's visit had made it a necessity rather than merely a priority. Murphy was not going to be thrilled that I was thrusting myself into her side of this investigation. And better and better, because the White Council business uh, was all hush-hush to non-wizards, I wouldn't be able to explain to her why I was doing it. Further joy. You know, sometimes I think someone up there really hates me. Eh, it kind of looks like it at this point. You know what I mean? Whew. I still haven't found another book that I want to read. Um, I got a few Star Wars books over here. Um, if you guys are interested. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I guess for right now, until I can find some good books, it'll just be the one video. Because I don't want to, I don't know. I guess I could read the Percy Jackson books. I've never read them before. Or if I can find... I have, I have a few series uh, uh, this is from my childhood that would be interesting. I was fond of the Magickers. It's a little bit like Harry Potter. Not exactly though, but a little bit. Ooh. Um, the Chronicles of Narnia would be interesting. Um, Charlie Bone. I liked I liked those books. What else is there? Oh shoot! I just had another one. I was going to say it before uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, but I forgot it. Oh, that's going to bother me. Artemis Fowl? Those are really good books. Hmm. Anywho, if you can think of something, let me know. Um, I'll look around, see what I can find. And until next time, uh, goodbye everybody. And again, I'm sorry.
need some more water, though. 